Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go over something that I shot this September. Um, it's October now and uh, the, the majority of my summer was bad. I mean, it was really rainy and it was really cloudy and I didn't have very many clear nights and I got to the point where I was finding an hour or two and I would image for that hour or two and then I'd close up the observatory and maybe uh, the next night I'd go out for another hour. Um, just any time I got a break in the clouds, I was trying to image. And in September, the clouds had cleared. Uh, whatever the weather pattern was, it had shifted and we had just had a beautiful September. I would say three out of the four weeks of September were all clear nights. And I just got some amazing data that I wanted to share with you from, from September. But mostly I just wanted to go over the main target. And my main target was an unusual target. Uh, there, were no, there was no moon when I picked this target and I wanted to go for something dark. And I was looking around at all the different dark nebulas and I found one that I didn't even realize existed. And so here, let me start from the beginning. The, what I really intended to do was to revisit the North American Nebula. I hadn't shot that in years. As a matter of fact, it was one of my first images. Uh, I, you know, I, I shot Andromeda and Orion, the, the normal ones, and of course, the North American and Pelican Nebula. And since I've gotten um, better gear and, and more equipment over the years, I haven't went back to shoot that. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna go try the Cygnus wall and, and the whole North American Pelican Nebulas and maybe even do a mosaic or something like that. And then I noticed that there is actually a dark nebula between the two. I didn't realize this before. I thought that there was like empty space between those two nebulas. Uh, most of the majority of pictures that I see online are, to me, it appears like it's empty space. And when I shot that way back when, and uh, from my image here, um, <laughs> this was like one of my first images ever that I'm sharing with you. So be kind to it. Uh, but at the time I shot this, I just thought it was amazing and it was wonderful that I was able to actually capture this. But I thought that it was just empty space in between the Pelican and the North American Nebula. Uh, and I just learned this just recently that it's not really empty space. It's, it's a dark nebula in between them. And so I got on a, this little mission or goal of mine to really bring out that dark nebula, uh, either through post-processing or just lots and lots of data. So I set about to get about 30 hours worth of data and then I was gonna evaluate from there. And then if I couldn't bring it out, I was gonna go a little bit further with the data collection. Um, fortunately, 30 hours was plenty and I really didn't even get 30 because I had to throw away a lot of, of exposures because of high clouds that came through and airplanes and, and whatnot. But it still really brought out that dark nebula and that's what I wanna share with you today. So if you follow my channel, you know the equipment that I use. But for those of you who don't know, or if you've, uh, you're new to the channel, uh, I use a William Optics Zenith Star 81. It's a doublet telescope. Uh, it's one of the better doublet telescopes, uh, I think, that are out there. Uh, it doesn't have absolute perfect chromatic aberration correction, but it's really close. I mean, you have to really be picky uh, to to notice. And for the price of the of a triplet. Um, this is a great bargain, just great budget telescope for any beginners out there. Uh, I also use the William Optics Guide Scope, and uh, in this setup, I'm using the 120 Mini. I also have a 174, but I pretty much just use that on off-axis guiders. I've also always run, or almost always run, the ZWO EAF, uh, and I've got a, I shoot mono, yeah, I'm using the 2600mm Pro on this setup tonight. I also have a 294mm Pro that I use a lot of, but mostly with my Edge HD8 because it pairs better with it. And I use a ZWO filter wheel with Antlia filters. They're the three nanometer Pro filters and they are excellent. I've also got some Astrodon and Chroma filters in the 1.25 inch variety. And when I compare them to these, uh, they are right on par with each other. So I'm really impressed with these Antlia filters. In case anyone out there is wondering uh, if they're any good, I really love them a lot. 
So all of this usually rides on top of my CEM120. The CEM120 is my mount for the observatory. I've also got an EQ6R Pro, and I usually use that when I wanna shoot something outside of the observatory or I want a second rig running for the night. Now this summer I really haven't had that opportunity because of the clouds and I've also been battling a lot of wildlife. So being outside outdoors in the middle of the night is probably not the best idea. Although I've done it a few times and luckily the, I haven't run into any bears. Um, usually those are on nights when I'm not out and, and I get up in the morning and there's a bear out. So uh, I've been really lucky about that. So the North American Nebula uh, sits just right next to the Pelican Nebula, and they're both in the Cygnus constellation. And they're really far out there, they're like 2,200 light years from Earth, which is pretty far. And I think that when you look at some of the images that you see online of it and the images that, that you take, uh, it, it does look like there's a break in between them. And that's because of the stars. And what I'm starting to realize from taking a lot of these um, hydrogen alpha subs is that there is a dark nebula in between them. And maybe there is a little bit of space in between here and there in pockets, but the majority of the space that you see in between those two nebulae is actually a dark nebulae. And I don't know if that dust is, how far away that dust is, but it's been called, uh, labeled LDN 935. And so for all intents and purposes, what I've really done is taken an image of LDN 935 and made it very prominent uh, so that you could see it. And the reason being is because using the Hubble palette, I'm able to contrast the, that particular dark nebula with the North America and Pelican Nebula behind it. So here we have the North America Nebula and on this side, on the upper left and on the lower right, we've got the Pelican Nebula. And these came out really nice. I do like the, the way that it came out. Uh, but most importantly is the center here, which is LDN 935. And it's still, even in this image, it looks to me like um, the North America Nebula just stops here and the Pelican Nebula stops here. And, and in between, there's some empty space without uh, devoid of gas or, or emission nebulae of any kind. And, but when you remove the stars from this image, and I've got one here with the stars removed, you can start to tell that this is actually a dark nebula and the, the gases just aren't, I'm guessing they're not ionized, they're not lit up, they're not um, reflecting, there's no light reflecting on them. And they must just be in front of uh, the North America and the Pelican Nebula. And to make it even uh, stand out more, we can reverse the image so that you're, you know, you're used to seeing the Pelican North America in a certain way. And I found that when I flipped the image over and I start to zoom in, you can really see that this isn't space or empty space. Um, and you could tell from the, the background that the nebulosity from both of the other two nebulae are back there. And this is just basically covering them up. And as we move along through here, um, you could even see the differences in the actual dark nebula. Uh, I was able to capture some of the nuances and, and different shades of gray in between the, the actual dark nebula itself, it, which really points out that, yes, this is its own nebula, its own nebulosity. And even in the, the darkest spots here, um, you can still see that some some spots are darker than others and uh, it's so dark that it kind of blotches everything out and it actually looks like space and then when you put stars in front of it 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 looks like it's like it's empty space uh, devoid of anything but in reality it's actually just a dark nebula that that lays over this area here and basically separates the two other 
uh, nebulosities so that you've got a Pelican Nebula and you've got a North America Nebula. And I've heard this referred to as the Gulf of Mexico Nebula, the, the Dark Nebula, because of the fact of where it would sit if you were looking at a map. But yeah, I was just kind of blown away and shocked that, that this actually truly is um, a, a dark nebula that goes over the top of these. And, and you could really see the way it comes out here, over here um, towards the Pelican Nebula more. And especially when you flip it in this direction, um, you could tell that this is absolutely um, a, a nebulosity. It's just a dark nebulosity, and, and it's not empty space after all. So I hope you found this video useful or entertaining in some way. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite images that I've ever taken before. The more I work with it and the more I look at all the different parts of the image, it's, it's just becoming more and more fascinating. And I'm really enjoying uh, the way that this this entire image and project came out. Uh, please, in the comments below, let me know what you thought. Did you, have you always thought that there was empty space between these two nebulae or did you always know that this was just a dark nebula that sits on top of this and, and basically separates these two because it, I find it very interesting that it just never dawned on me it never hit me and I uh, it's funny how you you learn things even you've been doing this for years and you're still always finding something new or or different that you never knew about it's really cool uh, I'm going to leave you with my image. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.